if my face already does not give the hint let me tell you i have been spending the last six eight hours not continuously maybe a bit of few gaps in between but figuring out how to get codam up because aws has one of the worst service downtimes today in the us east one zone and we were impacted by that as well so i want to walk you through a little bit of what we did at codam in the night time to make sure the services are up as soon as possible and as i'm recording this video although codam website is still functional but aws part of aws which we use is still fundamentally broken that's like the downtime is continuing so it's it's not about why aws went down it's about why we went down the codedam.com website went down and what we could have done whether that's in terms of multi-region or multi-cloud deployment to have prevented that let's go if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow i have done countless videos on codedam's infrastructure but just to revise again very quickly codedam has two parts the front end which is in next.js the back end which is in graphql and the back end has a database on mongodb atlas even in the last video how to create a scalable back end architecture if you have seen that we discussed that in that video that CodeDamp's backend architecture is actually inside a VPC, which happens to be in US East 1, AWS region, which went down just today. I mean, it's it's the parts are still down. Some parts are still down right now, or at least in degraded performance. But this VPC over here is in US East 1. What does this mean? This means that this MongoDB Atlas is somewhere deployed in US East 1, and this is VPC peered into CodeDAM, and the GraphQL Lambdas, they are deployed in US East 1. The NAT gateway, which enables this Lambda to access internet, that is deployed in US East 1. The Redis caching is deployed in US East 1. So we do have a lot of components sitting up in US East 1. And this region, suddenly a lot of services started failing today. We discovered this, I think around 11 p.m. IST, when we found out that a lot of backend calls are giving 504 on a serverless backend call, right? So it doesn't make a lot of sense for a serverless backend call to give 504 until two of the things have happened. Either somehow your database was corrupt or crashed, but that did not seem likely because we would probably get a GraphQL response in that case, or your underlying infrastructure is down which in this case means that AWS is down because we use serverless architecture. So we figured out that AWS is down and because we were not multi-region in the backend side, what was happening that AWS, although the CloudFront deployment, which handles the Next.js code, the front-end code, the main website was visible. So you could technically browse on codedam.com and see all the server-side generated pages and everything was functional. Links were clicking, everything was happening, but no backend call was being able to make, you know, was being successful. So if you go to codedam.com and try to log in, you won't be able to do that. You go and register, you won't be able to do that. You try to enroll in a course, you won't be able to do that. If you're on a course page and if you're watching a video, that will work perfectly fine because CloudFront was working fine, was working fine, <laughs> there's a twist in upcoming in the video but this backend went down this us east one the api gateway and the lambda services api gateway basically went down which sits in front of lambda so impossible for any client to connect to our backend which pretty much makes the whole website useless and you know what's what's worse than a website which says it's down it's a website which stays up but it is actually down so i was getting queries on email that your contact form is loading so slow because we were facing problems and we wanted to contact you but we were not able to contact you because again this happened on the contact form itself we use backend for that as well uh, people were sending messages on support so this was a disaster because it seemed like the website is fully functional and working fine because of static site generated pages by Next.js. But in fact, the backend, the core of the site was down. All right, so, so far, figuring out everything, making sure, you know, nothing else is down or nothing is wrong from our side. Around 12 midnight or 12 a.m., I actually started working on a solution. Is it possible that we migrate the this Lambda somehow outside this particular region in some other region maybe like us west 2 and pretty much divert the traffic that way so that we can get up so obviously creating this vpc peering and everything was a delicate setup in itself and this all this setup would, would have actually taken a lot of time anyway like setting up the redis the nat the mongodb atlas again then re-adding a region to it 
is also one configuration which you have to do so this would have taken a lot of time and i was thinking that maybe it's not a big outage right maybe aws just gets on their feet and, and restores the access i mean in in maybe a 30 minutes one hour but as time went by 12 30 happened one happened i figured out that aws is is gone for good for some time now so it was 1 1 and a half, 1 1 30 a.m and aws still wasn't responding so what i decided to do is that enabled a single ip address whitelisted a single ip address on this mongodb atlas to be connected over internet created a new medium ec2 instance deployed the graphql backend over this instance and connected it with a backend dash failover dot code dam dot com of course this is not ideal but this would get the job done now the only thing we have to do was this connection because this connection was established because atlas gives you the option to to ip to whitelist an ip address so that that particular instance can access your atlas database even outside the vpc so this connection was fine and the client was also able to connect to this backend failover.codam.com slash graphql and everything seems like you know it's good until aws figures out this stuff here's what happens now so in order to deploy this new change backend failover.codam.com I obviously pushed this to the Next.js repo. Next.js repo did a CloudFront invalidation of the production deployment and the hell broke down. What happened was the moment we did this CloudFront invalidation and this next deployment which contained this URL, all the pages on the website went 503, unable to communicate to the backend. So the existing CloudFront deployment started failing for some reason, I'm still not sure what this reason was because CloudFront either was not able to propagate all the changes or just died out somehow in between, but something happened, something broke in the, in the middle of this deployment. And then I went to Twitter, I came to know CloudFront apparently uses some component in US East 1, which probably also went down in this whole mess. So now we have a website where we have a non-functional backend and a non-functional frontend. Awesome. I mean, now at least we are on, on a page where people see that the website is not working. So that's a bit of progress, but not really. All right, so CloudFront is down. US East 1 is down. API gateways in US East 1 is down. We have the connection ready, but we cannot ship it because our shipping thing, the, the way we propagate the changes, is pretty much messed up and at this point i was actually taking a look at Vercel as well my old friend i mean i just made a <laughs> video a couple of days ago about buy Vercel, hello aws but <laughs> apparently i saw Vercel how these guys are handling the outage and i figured out that Vercel actually does not use cloudfront i was under the impression that Vercel uses cloudfront as a cdn but Vercel has its own edge network really i mean they might not have physical servers but they have their own edge network that means it's not cloud front maybe it's custom made maybe they're running ec2 instances all over the world but it's not you know the service over here this was awesome i mean uh it, it was almost like you know i was sorry that i moved away from Vercel, and you know then in a couple of days an aws outage happens then you regret those decisions right so anyway this was i think the only viable option right now because there were options i could have created an ec2 instance in some other region and deployed a next.js app and mapped the a record to this but this wasn't you know this wasn't feasible because if we got a lot of traffic even if we don't get a lot of traffic you will see a lot of degraded performance and like i mentioned only thing worse a non-functional website is a functional website which appears to be functional but actually is non-functional so what i did was move at least move the domain immediately to Vercel for the time being so right now if you visit code maybe it's back on cloud front i don't know by the time you're watching this video maybe it's up uh, but at this point at the point of recording codedam.com is back on Vercel for a day um <laughs> so yeah i mean i could probably keep the title of this video as by aws hello Vercel as well but these things these things happen so by the time by the time i mean we were at 130 right this whole mess actually the this ec2 setup and everything i think i was able to do by 230 230 or 3 tried deploying it cloudfront broke down 
you know debugging that took a lot of time talk to aws support team as well so it took me like took me to 5 or 6 am in the morning and then uh figuring out that versal is the only viable option move it back so by 6:30 we were back on 6:30 or 7 i think not again not sure on the timings but 6:30 or 7 we were back on versal and uh yeah by 7 7:30 uh aws also announced that you know most of these services are now fixed it's just that they have degraded performance and clearing backlog so the back end was up anyway so this setup was kind of like a waste of time in a way and uh, yep right now it's running on versal and everything is happening so what can we learn about the downtime of code dam from this outage we can learn about that in this scenario in this specific scenario even multi region deployments would fail even if you know this was not the initial bottleneck it would fail because cloudfront failed this component which is global in aws it's a global service this went down so it was no point to have uh, you know even if this was this architecture was multi region in aws it will still not work because cloud front went down it does mean that you if you are a big company now i understand i mean for small companies it wouldn't make a lot of sense to do such huge amount of investments on the infrastructure part but for bigger companies it makes a lot of sense to have a second cloud as a redundancy not just a region but a second cloud itself and especially if you are relying on something which in this case was a global service but has some critical components in a region in a specific region which might fail so i think netflix for example i think they do not use anything except aws but the exception with that is their cdn servers are their own so they are not using the cdns from aws so they just use aws for the application layer and maybe database but the cdns are their own in this case we were using cdns from aws which screwed us the moment we did this particular deployment after this incident we would be discussing a bit about multi region or multi cloud deployment let's see how that turns out it is fairly straightforward i wouldn't say like it's very difficult because mongodb atlas gives us the option to you know at a increased price obviously uh gives us the option to deploy the same database cluster into multiple regions as well as across multiple cloud providers so that is pretty much all we need to do because the moment this mongodb is shared with five other vpcs all we need to do is create different resources in those vpcs this vpc could be from google cloud you know this vpc could be aws in us west or europe central or even bombay or anything any sort of region and uh, yep we just need a lambda because our lambdas are already server uh, stateless so that's fine we would need a redis copy we would need a nat gateway and at least the back end part would be completely redundant in the sense that if anything happens to aws google cloud is there google cloud is your something like that for front end i'm still skeptical because we would ideally want to rely on a single cdn provider only but i mean the way for front end i feel is something which we did even right now quickly switching to a uh, another cdn which deploys next js just as good as versal for example or even versal right versal is not a bad choice so yep we can discuss more on this maybe later but right now i'm super exhausted so would we'll probably end the video here that is all for this one and i made this video because i wanted to share my learnings and and things which have been happening this day in real time with you guys so if you appreciate it make sure you subscribe and leave a like that helps the video creator in this case that's me it helps the algorithm and it helps the video in general to reach to more people that is all for this one i'm going to see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching